questions I get asked most on the photography channel is, how on earth do you get the blurred background behind your images? How do, how do they look so good on a branch? Um, and it's all really down to what it's behind the bird. Obviously your camera settings, uh, the aperture, um, and also uh, you need to have, as I say, this distance behind to be able to get the bokeh, the blur. Um, as I say, out in the, in the open there, uh, it's not so bad. You may have a horizon you know, half a mile away. But what do you do when you want to practice at home? Uh, you've got wild birds coming into your garden and you're trying to get decent shots. And it is rather difficult because what you find is that often as not, you're limited by space. You can't really easily set up a bird uh, photography feature and get the distance behind to get the lovely blur. However, I live uh, in a small village in North Yorkshire and it is a small cottage garden and we don't have very much space here, yet I'm still able to get those shots that a lot of people are looking for, where you get a nice blurred background. And what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna share with you how you can do that too. So stick around, I'm gonna show you how to build a bird feed station free of charge, similar to the one that I made for my back garden, and I'm gonna show you how to use it to get images like this, which you can be very proud of. Stick around, and I'll show you how to do it. So you know the idea, the idea basically is to get an opportunity to take bird photos in your own garden at li little or no expense that you'll be really proud of, that you can put on your Facebook page or on uh, any of the social media and be really proud to show people. Now I'm going to give you a quick tour around my small front garden and show you just how much you can snuggle in and still get that background that you're looking for despite the size. Let's take a look around. So as you can see it is a relatively small garden, small but beautiful, and uh, I've got the, the uh, materials laid out there for where I'm going to build a, a feed station, but as you can see, it's quite difficult because of the actual size of the garden. And if we move down into the garden itself, you can see that uh, it's limited by a, a narrow strip. Now, I can't go lengthways because there's too much contrast behind with the bushes, you can see, and uh, uh, this would be pointing directly into the sun anyway. So if I turn around here, and this would be another good angle for length, but unfortunately you can see we've got a driveway and we've got other vehicles. So I found out that probably the best area to get the best results would be into this corner, and in particular for this bushy area here and the area behind. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a feed station. Now I've done a video earlier about this uh, in my, my back garden, but this is going to be a one in the front garden. And I've got some materials here which I'm going to use to make a simple bird feeder. It's a bird feed station so you can hang feeders from it um, and also you can make it so that where the birds will perch, they will perch looking into the background here which will give you the best results, a nice green a blurred background. So these are the materials I'm going to use. Some I've already used in the past. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and put like a, a, a Y yoke either side um, and then attach a cross piece. And the cross piece will be made up of this brand new piece that I've got here just yesterday, which I got from the local woodlands. Um, remind you that you've got to be careful you know, not to cut anything out, pick up only dead wood and, and then bring it out and uh, make sure that you don't do anything that would upset the local authorities. So I only pick up dead material and then I use it to create these uh, these feeders uh, and this, these feed stations. I've got some poles here that I'm going to use as supports and uh, then I've got a few tools here, very few tools needed, just something to bang the supports in. I've got some cable ties and I also, also put some screws in through the branches onto the support posts just to give it extra support. One thing I would remind you as well is if you're building a, a, a feed station on top of your lawn, as I will be, I have no option but to do that, use feed that doesn't germinate. So make sure that what you pick up uh, at the food store is not something that will germinate on your lawn. Otherwise, you're going to be in a world of hurt uh, with stuff below. Now, I'm very fortunate that uh, I, I get the, the non-germinating stuff but I've also got some lovely wood pigeons that come in and hoover up the lawn afterwards so it's a very fortunate position to be in. So let's get cracking. I'm going to show you now how to build the feed station and then I'm then going to show you how I'm going to use this area here, my porch area, 
to build a temporary bird hide, which will allow me to photograph from a close distance straight down into those bushes. And uh, we'll see what kind of results we get. I'm very confident that we get a good result. So let's see. So this is what I've ended up with. Obviously I've strengthened it a wee bit. I put some screws through uh, the wood to actually uh, keep it a little bit more secure. Although unless some kind of enormous buzzard comes down, I think it should be okay anyway. And, and you've noticed that basically I've hung the feeders underneath the branches. Previously, um, we put the feeders up above and to tempt the birds in. But what I've found is the sensible thing to do, put the feeders underneath and then you'll find that the, some birds will come down straight to the feeders, but the other ones will be more patient and they will settle on the branches up above, which will allow you to get a nice shot on a, a nice piece of wood. Now, and I've got a nice bit of wood here with some pine cones on, which will look really, really nice if we get the right conditions. Um, you'll notice what I've tried to do is I've tried to put distance between the uh, feeder and the bush behind. You need that distance to get the blur you also need a decent telephoto lens. It doesn't have to be anything on this scale, but it has to be really something with a decent telephoto lens. And you should be photographing at maximum length so that you may make sure that, that the blurring behind there is as soft as you can. Now, you're not going to get a perfectly soft uh, background with that. There will be, you see the little black uh, holes in the, in the actual uh, the shrub itself. They're going to come out and show, but it, it can be quite nice actually. Some people prefer the purest where it's absolutely plain green behind and that's really nice, but uh, in certain circumstances it's really difficult, if not impossible, to do that. So if you do a setup something similar to this, cost you nothing, make sure your feeders are trailing underneath and make sure that the uh, branches to tempt the birds in are up above. I've got one other kind of little secret here, is that uh, you notice I've drilled a hole in this branch here. Uh, the idea being is that I can actually take a branch, so I'll put the branch in the hole, and if you want to say put a seasonal uh, branch in there, it can be very useful for that, and then you can actually use that um, to actually attract birds onto a seasonal perch. Uh, we can take the one behind out there because it's just held on um, with the straps. Uh, they're easy to take off and easy to replace. So I try to make it as easy as possible to change. And that's something you do have to do on a regular basis is to change your purchase just to make it more interesting. And as the seasons come on, you can put different plants in, you know, different branches in, um, and uh, you'll obviously get different colours in the background. Um, another thing is if you've got something with the, with the lichen on here, the green uh, uh, on the branch, try and remember certainly in the warmer weather to give it a bit of water otherwise it'll just go brown and fall off it will eventually anyway but you want to keep it as green for as long as you possibly can so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go i've built a, a temporary hide here uh, by using some uh, camouflage netting uh, which i've hung across the porch i'm going to go behind that i'm going to trim a hole in it so i can put the lens through and that will give me a lovely shot from here back towards the perch and you'll see that for most of the branches they're stuck nicely into that lovely green bush uh, which should give us an opportunity to get some nice shots so let's see how we get on with that so here i am it's a couple of hours since i finished off uh, the bird feeder and uh, given the birds a couple of hours to familiarize themselves with the, the uber cautious as you would expect there are one or two dropping in there little brave souls who are uh, hungry enough to have a go uh, but it's going to take a few days for them to get used to the idea of the setup uh, they're ultra suspicious and uh, but as that will all change when they see other birds coming in their you know confidence will grow and the birds will come in uh, en masse 
Uh, unfortunately, we've got a lot of sparrows and um, it's uh, causing a bit of a problem for us because they tend to chase the other birds away and the starlings in particular uh, just strip out the feeders in a matter of hours. Um, but, you know, that's a price you have to pay. So what I'm doing is I'm sitting in the porch. I've got uh, um, my uh, camera underneath poking out through the uh, the netting here and uh, it doesn't seem to be bothering the birds at all so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take a test shot just to see what the background is actually like and that is just quite nice it's surprisingly nice um i think that will really suit us well when we come to put some especially some of the specialized feeders out if we get something for you know the winter time christmas time we should be able to get some really nice static shots there um the settings i'm using um you know it's always going to be a compromise when you've got a short background out in the fields in america or africa nine times out of ten i've got nothing in the background it's a, either a sky or the horizon is somewhere away, or there's a lot of green somewhere away. Uh, so the aperture really can be placed as low as possible. Uh, the problem with aperture is you want the background, um, but you also want the, uh, the, the sharpness of the, uh, of the bird. So ideally, with a very distant background, I could go up to f8, even f10. Now, I'm having to compromise here because if I take the aperture up too much, it will sharpen up the background because it's not too far away. So I'm going to end up uh, with detail behind, which I don't really want. So I'm compromising and I'm doing an aperture of f6.3, which is on the high side for um, you know blurring the background out and actually the low side for sharpness of the bird. So it's a compromise you have to make. So I'm looking at f6.3. I want to keep my speed up, especially with the small birds. I think what you'll find basically with the small birds is that they do twitter about a lot the tail flicks um, and there's hidden movement there that you can't see on the back of your camera but you can see when you blow them up so I'm going to try and keep my speed up at a thousand uh, a thousandth of a second um, really sunny days for flight shots in a good conditions I'll go up to 2500 maybe 3000 um, but on these t small birds I'm again I'm compromising at a thousandth and uh, I want an auto ISO which is giving me I think what a about 2,500 for this model of camera and the software used to process that's perfectly acceptable so I'm going to take a few shots now of the few birds that are coming in and I'm going to add it to the video to see what I've got from a setup that really is far from ideal because of the the, the clearer or the, the nearer background but I'm just trying to show you that if set up correctly you still can get those nice soft blurred shots with a lovely background have a go you might surprise yourself see you next time on the better photography channel